Hey there! Today we are cooking with snap peas, asparagus, pasta, and flavored cream cheese. On this episode of What Do You Make Of This, I'm going to show you how to make a quick, easy, creamy spring vegetable pasta. Springtime is such a wonderful time of year for vegetables. In fact, most of my favorite vegetables come to their peak at this time of year. The weather can be a little iffy though, so sometimes you're not quite sure if you want something light and fresh or if you want something kind of hearty and satisfying. This pasta dish ticks both of those boxes, and it's so quick and easy, you can have dinner on the table in about the same amount of time it takes to open and cook a box of macaroni and cheese. I'm going to show you how. So the first thing we're going to do is start by just trimming up some vegetables here. And I do want to note before I get started that you can absolutely do this while your pasta cooks and shave minutes off of your prep time. However, because of the amount of space I have to work with and I want to make sure that you can actually see what's going on, I'm going to just do the prep work first and then we'll move on to cooking. You don't have to do that. So the first thing I'm going to start with are just some stringless sugar snap peas. And these little babies, I love so much, I can honestly open a bag of them and eat them like potato chips. They're stringless because you can snap them in half and there's no real long strings the way there are for um, like snow peas or even fresh peas that you're shelling. So these are a great go-to for me, especially when I want dinner in a hurry because there is very minimal prep work. So all I'm going to do for these, I'll just dump them all out onto a cutting board and work from there is just cut them in half. I, I don't want them to be whole like this because they can be a little bit hard to eat, but at the same time, if you cut them too small, then they kind of become the star of the show. And let's be honest, we want pasta to be king when we're eating pasta for dinner. So to do this, I've got some running away here. I'm just going to do this in some small bundles. Just kind of line them up, get them into a bundle, and then run your knife right through the middle. And that will give you a pretty easy to spear on a fork bite. It's going to be about the same size as the pasta that we're using for this dish as well, so it's win-win. And once you've got those halved, I'm just going to put them right back into the bowl and repeat the process. That one's actually got a little bit of a brown spot, so I'm just going to toss that into my garbage bowl, which is in the sink. You probably can't see that, but that's what's over there, if you've ever wondered. Okay, one more time, and actually I've got a couple of little guys here that are already the size I want them to be, so just pick them out, throw them straight in the bowl. They're good to go. Once again, we will just make a little pile run the knife right through the middle and it doesn't have to be rocket science. It's okay if some are bigger than others. They will cook slightly differently, but they're only going to cook for about a minute. So what will happen is some will just be a little bit crunchier than others, but honestly, I like that. It kind of gives a little bit of extra texture as you're eating. So it's not a bad thing. And again, this is a quick dinner. Okay, last pile, one more time, get them into a nice little row. Knife right down the center. That one's got a little spot too. And I actually had a couple stragglers that didn't make the cut, so one more, now we're ready. Okay, and if you've never eaten these, you can eat the whole thing, pod and all, but you also get these cute little peas that come out, um, which sometimes are kind of fun to just pick out and eat and then eat the pod. I have a lot of fun eating snap peas. They are absolutely my top three favorite vegetable. Uh, another one of my top three is asparagus, so let's talk about that next. So asparagus, perfect, beautiful springtime vegetable. Um, they can come in, in pretty big, thick stalks. They can also be really thin and grassy looking. They're all delicious. A good trick though for preparing them is this part is really nice and tender and delicate. This part can get kind of woody. It can be a little hard to know where to stop, where to start trimming. So what you can do is hold it about in the middle, hold the end and you're gonna start bending it and it's going to snap at a certain point. Now, if you snap, you can snap it anywhere, but if you start bending it from the end, once it gets to the point where the woody part stops, it'll snap off. This part, you don't wanna eat. You're going to be chewing that for days. But this is now our test subject. Because most of the asparagus is all harvested from, from the same row, they have a very similar um, texture all the way through. So you can just take this entire bunch now, line it up from the spears, and using that guy as our test dummy, we are just going to cut everything else right down to that same length. Now these, by the way, you do not have to throw out. If you are a maker of stock, save these in your freezer and the next time you make some stock, throw these in. Throw them out along with your soup bones, but this will add a lot of a really great flavor to your soup, so waste not, want not. I'm just going to get them out of the way. So for the asparagus, I'd like to start for this pasta by cutting off the tips and they're gonna be a little bit longer 
but they're just so beautiful and delicate on their own that if I started cutting it into small pieces, they would kind of fall apart like confetti into your pasta and, and then you've wasted probably what is the best part of asparagus. So those are going in. The rest of this stock part, I'm going to cut about the same size as the snap peas. So I'm just going to go in and these are gonna be about one inch pieces. You can go bigger if you like, you can go smaller if you're like, this is your dinner. Um, frankly, you don't even have to use asparagus and snap peas if you don't like them. Just think light, bright spring vegetables. So other things that come to mind are green beans, snow peas, zucchini, anything that's just got a really nice, bright, fresh, crisp, mild flavor is going to be spectacular in this pasta. You could probably try broccoli, but broccoli is one of those things that can overpower a dish sometimes. And it's really about the pasta and just celebrating the bounty of spring. So try to keep it light, but if you love broccoli and you've got it on hand, hey, throw it in, it's still gonna be good. Okay, so I'm just going to get the last of these vegetables into a bowl. And uh, that's our prep work. That is all you have to do. And like I said, you can do this while the pasta is cooking, no problem. Speaking of cooking pasta, I'm going to show you how to put this together next. All right, it's showtime. It's time to get going on this pasta. So what I have here is a big pot of boiling water. And to that, I am going to go in with a very, very generous tablespoon of salt. Hear me out. This is the only chance you have to season your pasta while it's cooking. We're not making soup. We're not going to drink this water. But what's going to happen is if it's very nice and salty, the pasta will then absorb some of that salt water while it cooks, and that will make for a more flavorful pasta. So what you're looking for is if you were to actually taste this water, it would taste extremely salty, kind of like a day at the beach. So that's what you're looking for. Give it a taste if you're not sure, but if you've ever put less salt than that into your water, I would strongly encourage you, put a little extra, see what it does to your pasta. I'm pretty sure you're gonna like it. Okay, so while I wait for this to come back up to a boil, let's talk about the pasta I'm using. So this is a cheese tortellini. This is a totally vegetarian dish, by the way, so call your vegetarian friends over for dinner. This is a good one. I like to use cheese tortellini for a few reasons. Um, first one being, it's stuffed with cheese, which in my opinion is never a bad thing, especially when it comes to pasta. Secondly, it's about the same size as the vegetables that we are cooking with. So you get a very uniform bite, whether you spear all three or one at a time. It's kind of the same experience throughout. Um, and last but not least, Tortellini cooks very quickly. So these little guys are only going to need about six to eight minutes. Check the package instructions. Every little pasta is different, um, but that's the general rule here. So six to eight minutes. My water's nice and hot again. I'm going to get this pasta into the pot. Ooh, it's fresh pasta, so it's sticking together. And I'm just going to break it apart a little bit with my spoon. So anytime you drop pasta into boiling water, whether it is fresh or dried, you just wanna give it a nice little stir and that is going to make sure it doesn't clump together while it's cooking. So like I said, this pasta is going to cook total for about six to eight minutes, but a little way through the cooking process, we're actually going to start making the sauce. So I'm going to let this just hang out and do its thing, and I'll see you in about five minutes. Okay, so pasta is boiling away. Let's get started on this very quick and easy sauce. So the first thing I'm going to start with is actually going to be some of this pasta water. So this is a great opportunity to just give everything a mix, make sure it's not sticking together, make sure it cooks evenly. And then into a hot, hot pan, I'm going to go in with maybe one or two ladles full of water here. Maybe even three, because what we're going to do is we are going to use some of this hot, salted, starchy pasta water to steam some vegetables. Um, I'm actually just gonna put that right back in there for now. So to this water, I am going to add in all of the asparagus, all of the snap peas. You can see how much vegetable this is once it's all spread out into a pan as well. And basically with this dish, I don't like to cook the vegetables through and through so that they're soft and soggy. It's not actually such a good thing. So this is just going to give it kind of a, a quick steam what we're looking for is tender crisp. So it is exactly what it sounds like. It's a little bit tender, but it's still kind of crunchy if you bite into it. And that's that perfect middle zone where it still has a little bit of attitude because the pasta is very soft. And this way, if the vegetables are a little bit more crunchy, it gives you a little bit of interest while you're eating. So I'm just going to let this hang out over the boiling water. And what it's going to do is it's just going to kind of steam a little bit and it will continue cooking um, once we add in the pasta, once we finish the sauce. So you just wanna give it a little bit of a head start, but not so much that it's falling apart completely. So just gonna move this around a little bit. 
make sure everything is nice and evenly distributed. And at this point, you could cover it with a lid, but I actually like some of the water to evaporate out a little bit because it's going to make for a more flavored sauce. So while this steams, let's talk a little bit about the cream cheese. So what I like to use for this is a store-bought pre-flavored urban garlic cream cheese. And this stuff is amazing because um, it takes a lot of the prep work out of it for you. If you can't find it, herb and garlic cream cheese is really simple to make yourself. You start with plain cream cheese and all you're going to add in is very finely diced parsley, green onions, and garlic. You mix it all up, you keep it at about room temperature, it makes it a little bit easier to stir. But this is going to be the flavor base for the entire pasta and it packs so much flavor. It's so rich and creamy, but you don't have to go through the hassle of making, um, you know, say an Alfredo sauce or anything like that. This is everything that's going into it. Once this mixes with the pasta water, it makes a really nice creamy cream sauce uh, in like a couple of minutes. So this is an amazing, amazing trick to have. If you want dinner quick, this is the way to do it. Okay, so these vegetables have had a little bit of a nice head start here. They're still nice and bright green, and that's what you're looking for. They're just, like I said, tender crisps. They're going to be warmed through, but they're not going to be cooked soggy. They still have that nice color, and that's what you're looking for. So while that happened, the last couple of minutes on the pasta has taken place. So the next thing we're going to do is just go in with this pasta. And I like to use a strainer for this because you may need a little bit more pasta water. Don't dump it out until you're done. But this way, you go in with a big strainer. Okay. No pastas left behind. Make sure there's none that are stuck to the bottom there. Everybody's going into this pan. And I'm just going to get that spider. Actually, you know what? It's done. I'm going to get it out of the way. Okay. And then I'm going to actually move everything a little bit out of the way, just so I have a little bit of room in the middle of my pan to cook. It's a pretty big pile of stuff though, so it's honestly probably not going to get completely out of the way. That's okay. So this here, like I had mentioned, store-bought urban garlic cream cheese. This is the entire eight ounce container all going into this pot. So this dish will make, what I'm making tonight is, is a very, very solid hearty meal for two people. If you wanna stretch it to four, you have a couple of options here. You're either going to um, double the pasta, keep the sauce the same though. What you do to stretch it out is actually just add a little bit more water. This will either make one extremely creamy for two people or it will make one that's still actually quite nice and creamy for four people. Great way to stretch a buck, great way to stretch your ingredients. It's still totally delicious. You could even add in a little bit of Parmesan cheese to it and that will really help to stretch it and bring it back to life and give it a nice flavor. Uh, the other thing you can do though is just keep it exactly at the serving size and also layer in some um, salad, maybe some garlic bread and that's another great way for this to feed plenty of people. So what I'm going to do now that I've gotten this into the middle of my pan, into that boiling water, is I'm just going to start stirring it gently and it's kind of starting to boil around the cream cheese and that's good because what's going to happen is that boiling water, I'm just gonna turn off the stove here on the other side. I don't need to be cooking water to nowhere. So what's going to happen is the boiling water is going to start to melt the cream cheese and that's what's going to start to make this nice creamy sauce. So keep working it in the middle until it looks like it's melted pretty much through. I do have a little bit stuck on the spoon here, so you know what, I'm just going to do that. It's hot, don't use your fingers, you're gonna boil yourself, so there we go. Boil yourself, I meant to say burn yourself, but I guess you really would boil yourself, wouldn't you? Okay, so get that off the spoon, get it into the pan, that's where it will serve the best purpose. And once it's no longer chunky, but just looking really nice and creamy, now we can start working in that pasta and those vegetables. So as you can see, by just cooking the vegetables ahead of time for about a minute or two, we've given them a head start. Same thing with the pasta. You wanna pull it out just a little bit early because everything's going to keep cooking now in this cheese sauce, which right now I can appreciate looks a little bit runny, but a, a couple of magical things are going to happen as this continues to simmer. Um, it's going to evaporate, so it's going to thicken in that sense. But also what's going to happen is the starch that's in this pasta water, and that's why we're using it, is going to help to thicken the sauce as it cools down a little bit. So I'm going to start by just moving it around. Get everything nice and coated in that cheese sauce. Just like that. And right now, while it looks quite loose, by the time it's done cooking and by the time you've let it cool for a couple of minutes, it's going to set into a really nice, thick, hearty cheese sauce, very similar to an Alfredo. But again, without any of the work and hassle of making an Alfredo sauce. And how great is that on a busy day? Okay, so now that this is nice and evenly distributed, I'm going to go in with a little bit of pepper, 
just to give it a little extra seasoning and a little extra flavor. This is up to you. If you like a lot of pepper, add a lot. If you like a little, just a little. If you like it spicy, add some crushed red pepper. Also totally, totally delicious in this. I'm going to leave it as kind of a nice mild thing though, because I do really just like the vegetables to be the star of this show. And sometimes if you go adding in the spice, it becomes a spicy dish and you can't really taste anything else. So I'm going to just work that pepper in one more time just to get everything nicely balanced, nicely evenly seasoned. And then all I'm going to do now that it's nice and evenly distributed is just let it keep simmering for about a minute. I'm going to take it off the heat and let it sit for a couple more minutes. And basically what you're looking for is once the sauce has thickened, you're ready to eat. So I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. Okay, so this pasta has been sitting and cooling for a couple of minutes, somewhere between two and five. It just really depends on how hot it was when you stopped cooking. And so let's take a look at it. So what you can see is now this sauce has gotten really nice and thick. Um, it's a lot more like an Alfredo sauce now. So just give this one final very gentle stir because your pasta is now cooked all the way through and you want to make sure it doesn't fall apart on you at the last second. But just to get everything really nicely coated in that good, thick, cheesy, creamy sauce, like so. And look how beautiful those vegetables are. I actually lost one. Get back in that pan. There we go. Okay, so this is just a beautiful, hearty, spring bounty of a dish. And now I'm just going to serve it up into a big bowl. Like I said, this will easily serve two straight out of this pan. You can stretch it to four um, with just some garlic bread and side salad or just double the pasta. Either way, you've got lots of sauce in here to play with. Or honestly, if it's just me and I'm wearing my sweatpants, one serving. <laughs> I think we've all had those days, right? So I'm going to err on the side of uh, being a little more delicate about this though. And I'm just going to scoop half of this pasta right into my beautiful pasta bowl here. Just like that. All these different colors too. That's what I love about cheese tortellinis. It's usually a few different colors and it just makes it pretty. There we go. All those nice vegetables, all that nice pasta. We'll save the rest off to the side for a second plate later. Maybe even a top up for me. And um, so this is looking really good. This is delicious right on its own, piping hot off the stove. However, if you have leftovers, it's also really delicious cold the next day. It's kind of a pasta salad. So if you need something to take to lunch that's quick and easy, these leftovers are the way to go. And here we have a quick and easy, rich and creamy spring vegetable pasta. As always, this recipe can be found in the description below. Please like and subscribe for more videos. I'm Jessica. Thanks for watching.